Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Alessandro, and uh, today I would like to present you the work uh, that uh, Ernest has been uh, doing and uh, how uh, the company leverages Duxer to achieve it. So, first, let's give you a bit of background. So, Ernest Research uh, was founded in 2012. It's a company that uh, sells uh, data analytics products. Uh, to understand the customer economy. It was founded by Kevin Carson, and it has a globally distributed team headquartered in New York with a growing Dublin office and uh, remote people such as me that I'm calling you from Italy. Uh, it has more than 110 uh, employees. And uh, as I said, it's focused on uh, consumer and market research. So what does Ernest do in practice? Uh, it uh, sells products that let uh, their customers understand uh, how uh, the economy is moving, how, uh, where consumers are spending their money, and so with that information, uh, how merchants are performing in the market. Ernest uh, is a very data-driven company. Uh, data is at the core. Uh, so uh, from the origination of the data, so getting data from several data sources to classification, which uh, means attributing entities to the data. Uh, normalization, so grouping this data, for example, in panels. And then interpretation, so which is providing analytics and uh, information about the data. It has a great track record. Uh, in the past five years, more than uh, 500 uh, potential top line beats and misses uh, were predicted against the consensus. Consensus is uh, uh, what the markets think uh, a company, how uh, the markets think a company will do. And uh, so Ernest was able to predict uh, better results than uh, the expectations that were then validated at the end of each quarter. Having said that, uh, as you can see, uh, data and analytics are a very important function in earnest. And for this reason, the data science enablement team was created with the mission to grow earnest product with data science and machine learning capabilities to support initiatives across earnest engineering and analyst teams. So the team wants to enable both engineers and analysts, which are a larger part of the company to uh, run data science and machine learning on the data. To be able to do that, uh, the team built uh, a machine learning platform whose infrastructure uh, consists uh, in uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks, which are heavily used for exploratory analysis and experimentation, uh, as we will see later. Uh, pipelines, which uh, the team uh, leverager, leverages Duxter for, uh, and groups uh, and creates uh, reusable standardized components. It's integrated with uh, other teams uh, using Duxter sensors and uh, operations are uh, farmed out to managed services such as AI platform, data flow and BigQuery. To connect all this infrastructure, the team created a library called the Data Science Development Kit or in short, the SDK, which I will talk about soon. So let's talk a little bit about the gap between experiments and production pipelines. So we saw that experiments uh, in the company are created in Jupyter notebooks, and it's usually Python code. The company historically runs production pipelines in Airflow using Kubernetes pod operator. But to go from the first step to the second step, uh, these, there are actually uh, a lot of things that go in between. Uh, which are, for example, writing the code in Python initially, like in your experiment, run tests locally if you're good, and then uh, uh, refactor these uh, chain transformations into CLI apps to wrap them individually in Kubernetes pod operator tasks, and then uh, either run Airflow locally or uh, push it to a remote instance to test. If everything works, great, but it never works on the first case, so go back to two and do it again and again and again. And especially the uh, wrapping the CLI up, uh, I found it uh, very, very hard to iterate on. Uh, so like uh, we call it uh, CLI hell because you need to keep 
passing arguments to a CLI and hope that uh, it's what it wants. So why did we choose Daxter? Uh, we first looked at Airflow because uh, it was uh, what was being used in the company. And uh, we saw that, uh, well, first of all, there are some missing features that are just not there. So directly executing DAGs or input and output type checking, which would have been nice. Configuration, yes, there is, but uh, it's a JSON blob that's not really validated. But uh, the most important thing is that the programming model is very task centric. You do A, then you do B, then you do C without uh, really much information being passed between tasks beyond like uh, passing maybe a string via XCOM. If you decide to use Python operator, your code becomes a little bit more ergonomic, but you would have to deploy a separate Airflow instance for each of, the, uh, of your pipelines, which is not realistic, or in the latest version of Airflow, uh, deploy all the virtual environments that you want to use in the Airflow instance. Uh, if you use Kubernetes pod operator, as I mentioned, there is CLI hell. Uh, so again, for especially for a data scientist, iterating on this was very painful. So we looked around and the established solutions, especially in Google Cloud, were Kubeflow and TFX. Uh, both are nicer to work on than Airflow, but share some of the issues that Airflow has. First of all, data input output is still a side effect. You don't pass data between tasks. You pass information about data if you're lucky. Um, configuration is validated, but it's not as good. And we there is a TFX also ticks the boxes of uh, directly executing and testing DAGs and input and output type checking, but it's very, very tied to TensorFlow, which uh, is not the only library we want to use in the company. So as you can see from the last column, uh, Daxter instead, uh, besides ticking all the boxes that we wanted, it also has a great API and uh, in my opinion, also a great programming model by putting data at the edges. So just to reiterate, why do we like Daxter? Uh, it's easy to run the same code uh, locally, execute pipelines in notebooks, as we will see soon, write tests and run on Kubernetes. Type checking is everywhere, despite it being Python. It has a data-centric approach, which leads to well-designed DAGs. Uh, I think it's very important to put data as inputs and outputs and not start read, reading data randomly in a DAG. Uh, and uh, then writing a solid is just a matter of decorating a Python function. And dependency L is nicely avoided thanks to the repositories and gRPC servers. So we have this infrastructure and we wanted uh, to build uh, some tooling for our data scientists to interface with this in infrastructure. So we built the data science development kit, the, the SDK. We want also to provide a standard way of developing machine learning products and a way of going from experiments to products in a seamless way, which was the problem really that we're trying to solve. So the DSDK provides uh, several base components and then some components that build on top of them. Uh, you can see, for example, data source just produces data, training gets some data, output some model, inference gets some model, output some data, etc. We needed to integrate with different data sources and things, uh, especially in Google Cloud. Actually, when we started this exercise, we were in AWS, so we moved to Google Cloud uh, with the entire company, uh, and Axel helped with that too. Uh, the execution uh, happens in different layers uh, and uh, the DSDK provides integration with all of them. And it supports different file formats and utilities that uh, you can use day to day in the notebooks. So having seen these components here, uh, you can see then uh, these components can be chained because the types match. So uh, you have, for example, a transform component that splits training and test uh, data, uh, gives uh, the training data to training, which outputs a model. Uh, inference also receives some data and then produces the final result. Each of these components also translate to a Daxter solid via a two solid method. So, uh, and Daxter is really at the core of everything that happens in the, the SDK. Uh, we still wanted to have this layer uh, to be able to expand uh, with other uh, execution layers and other stuff. 
We also have a custom IO manager and uh, some custom types. So first talking about the types, we have a location type, which is essentially a pointer to data that may be computed elsewhere. So this could be BigQuery or GCS or local file system. And data frame, which instead is data that's actually computed in the Python code that the solid is running or is needed in the Python code that the solid is running. You can see here a weird thing, which is that the types mismatch or seem to mismatch. Actually, IO manager, the IO manager that we built takes care of converting between the two. So we can change solids without uh, having to compromise on a performance. For example, a component that runs a SQL query, it would be weird to load the data frame just to yield it to the next component. So you can see here that I put some icons about the types that you of location and data frame that you can import and uh, export. So this is how it looks like in Dagit. You can just swap BigQuery with GCS, with the Google Sheet, with local file system, uh, without changing anything in the code. So just by changing there, uh, it just you can go from a unit test to uh, what you do in production essentially. So enough talk, <laughs> let's show you some code. And um, so now I'm switching to a notebook interface here. Uh, so here, while well, we are suppressing warnings because it's a demo, uh, I'm importing the DSDK, which is the library I just talked about, importing some libraries that I want to use in the demo. And this is the workflow that a data scientist uh, at Ernest usually does. So they start experimenting with some data so they load the data, for example, here, we are using the Iris data set. Uh, obviously, like uh, in real world data science, this notebook would be much messier. There would be like a retries and uh, the cell numbers would be different, but here it's all presented to you nicely. But uh, the important thing is that uh, data scientists uh, will uh, work with the data, trying to implement the classes or the components that I presented before. So we have a transform component, which as I said, gets some data and yields some data. Training, which gets some data and yields a model, which you can also type the model. And then inference component, uh, which gets some data, some model and yields some data. And again, a transform component. If data scientists uh, are able to code uh, such that uh, everything fits in these classes or further classes that we're building, then uh, they get a lot of stuff for free. And it's very easy actually to implement these, these classes because uh, they use standard Python types and uh, you just need to forget about where you get the data from and where the data goes. It's just Python functions really. So by it just being Python functions, you can run them and experiment with them locally. You can run them on a row. You can uh, create a confusion matrix and keep iterating until you're happy with your results. Then, once you're happy, let's make it a pipeline. So as I said, the classes uh, can be transformed to solid via this two solid method that, where you need to specify essentially the solid name and the, the types that it gets and it uh, yields. And uh, these classes automatically become solids. This is boilerplate that could be further abstracted, but it's still good because it's not a lot of work to do. You can then build your Daxter pipeline. As you can see, we are not hiding that we're using Daxter. Daxter, again, is at the very core of what we do. So with the solids we built above, we are uh, creating here a pipeline uh, with the usual nice Daxter syntax where like the results are just results and it looks like Python. And then uh, the pipeline can be executed in the notebook thanks to the Daxter execute pipeline function. So we pass in the pipeline and then we pass some configuration. Here is some standard IO manager config uh, and then some uh, solid specific configuration, obviously. This pipeline runs. You can see now all the output uh, in the, in the no Jupyter notebook. Look at all the logs. And then you can also inspect the output and look uh, if the results are what you want. Maybe the results are not what you want because here there is too much mismatch with these classes. So you want to experiment again. 
Since here we are using sklearn uh, and the interface for inference stays the same, we're just swapping training in this case. So the data scientist implements a new training class with the same interface. And it can test again locally just to sense check everything, check the confusion matrix. So to make it a pipeline, we just need to transform the new class into a solid and define the pipeline again. And we can run it again. And again, we can get the confusion matrix, you get it. Um, okay, so here we got data locally. So as you can see here, the configuration location, local, I put a URL and the data format. Uh, if I want to get the data from BigQuery, which is what happens in production, I just need to swap this. So I just need to say, hey, get this data from the BigQuery public data. So again, you can run your pipeline locally and test if it works. Uh, instead of a table here, you could specify a query as well, uh, which uh, might be helpful uh, to, to just, like if you have a, like a big table, you don't want to run it in a notebook. So you can do select and limit and whatever. Um, okay, so you get your results. And yeah, uh, this was a wrong output. We can also swap executors. So for example, we, if we want to run inference on Apache Beam, because uh, we want to highly parallelize uh, the, the inference, we can first of all run inference uh, uh, in, uh, in the notebook. Uh, the class uh, has also a two beam function. So it, it doesn't need to implement anything. It runs on beam. And here uh, we enforce that the locations are uh, specified externally using uh, the SDK types. And once you define your pipeline, you can then uh, instantiate a beam runner, in this case, a local runner, uh, and specify the output schema because beam wants the output schema for BigQuery and run the, the beam pipe, pipeline in the notebook. Once This will take a little bit. So once you're happy with your beam pipeline, to transform a beam pipeline into a, a Daxter solid, we have a function that transforms the pipeline into a solid. Uh, the, the key here is that uh, the, uh, the transformation doesn't read or write any data, but we append and uh, attach at the beginning the uh, reading input and output and the IO manager and the inference component, in this case, will take care of transforming the data. You can again define a pipeline then and execute it. The beam runner is a Daxter resource. So here you can configure it. And again, here we are specifying we want to use a local runner. So it's, it's running beam locally, but uh, running it on Dataflow would just be a matter of uh, using the Dataflow runner here. So as you can see, the re Daxter resource model also helps by making execution swappable, uh, which makes me think that even executor in Daxter could be a resource, but that, this is a topic for another meeting maybe. Um, so well, anyway, as you can see, you can run your pipelines in the notebook. It almost looks like production. So what do you need to do to deploy to production? Well, we usually have a Docker file, which contains the SDK, a workspace file, which gives a uh, Daxter high hint on uh, what to load. And then uh, uh, a Python file where we literally copy paste the classes and the imports from the uh, notebook. We copy paste the two solid function. We copy paste the pipeline and we, we just need to define these three lines of code and this is ready for production. So this was the notebook and the translation to production. I just want uh, to reiterate that uh, Daxter really helps us going from experiments to production. It significantly reduced the friction, especially compared to what we had with Airflow before. The time system uh, lets us separate uh, business logic from computation and data serialization, deserialization, and the resources and IO manager uh, lets us uh, integrate very easily with our cloud stack. In the future, we want to make more components in the DSDK. We want to start using Daxter Mill to send notebooks as artifacts. And we want to start using the Asset API because we 
are not using it yet, and we want to migrate to the new syntax, obviously. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>